Good afternoon, friends. New project on the bench and um, a guitar needing, certainly needing some fettling. It does not look to be in the greatest of conditions. It does need a good clean and the action on it is, it's sky high. And it's a, uh, it's a Simon and Patrick guitar, Canadian company, under the uh, Godin or Godin label. Uh, quite a few different names under the Godin or Godin label or Godin acquired. Um, <clears throat> brands and made in the Patry and Princeville, Quebec, Canada. I've actually owned a Simon and uh, Patrick guitar myself. Uh, an earlier model of this, this is the SP6 Cedar. I think I had the, I, I had some kind of six something, <clears throat> but whatever. Uh, this comes with a B band onboard EQ and pickup, I imagine under the saddle there. But the action, my goodness, look at it. It's got to be 8mm, well 6mm, say it's 6mm at this end, probably 5mm above the 12th fret, maybe even more. <clears throat> if I drop it 2mm here, I've got to drop it 4mm here, and I can't drop it 4mm there. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to alter the truss rod to get some of that relief out of it. I'm also going to remove the saddle, uh, I'm going to carve some off the bottom, I may even have to file some of the wood off the top of the bridge itself to be able to get enough uh, down there. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to have a quick look at where we are. For me to bring that down, I'm going to have to bring that down to... I'm going to take at least two mil off that saddle, from the bottom of that saddle. So, but the thing is with that, that changes the brake angle on the strings. <clears throat> and we don't particularly want to do that. <clears throat> we could do it to some extent on the treble side, but not so much on the uh, on the bass side, but not so much on the treble side. Again, looking at the slots, we're not slots. They are quite high, so we could lower the action by lowering the strings at this end also. So a couple of things I can do. <clears throat> uh, things I've not checked. I've not checked to see how level the frets are, uh, which is something else I'll do. Um, but yeah. You can certainly get the action lower on this and uh, we can get the setup done. <clears throat> I'll just wait for the owner to get back to me and let me know what strings he wants on it because he hasn't said what strings he wants, he just said the 11s. I said, well, what brand? So he's going to get back to me on that. This is one of two guitars <coughs> of the clients I have. a new client, he's based in um, Anglesey in Wales, but he does have, I think his stepdad lives up here, so he's bought the guitars over to me, one of my clients anyway. Uh, so like I say, first of two guitars, but I'm going to do this one first. So, <clears throat> I'm going to tinker with the truss rod, um, see what I can do. We're going to get the strings off, we're going to have a look at the frets, <clears throat> and uh, I will come back and give it... I've got something stuck in the back of my throat, I think. But anyway, I'll come back in a short while and let you know uh, what we're going to do with this guitar. Okay, friends, moving on. I've altered the truss rod so we've got the neck dead straight. Well, not straight edge on there, just checking for straightness. And I know it's straight because I've already checked. And I've been across with fret rocker and I think we're gonna need a fret level. So let's just have a look, see where we are. Fret rocker, four perfectly flat edges so we can check. The reason we've got four different lengths is so we can check three threats at a time. So we'll rotate. So we can always check three frets. The reason we check three is if one is high, it'll rock, it can give us that rock. So we're gonna go across the frets. Got some knees building up here, it's gonna be a corker. Okay, we'll leave that a second. So, with a neck dead straight, we're just gonna check for high frets. That seems good. That one's high. That one's high all the way across. So we're gonna check, so there's one. Any more than five, and I'm not most spot level by just doing that because if I take some material from that, it can alter the relationship with those two and those two. So I could end up also altering these two or these two either side. So once I get more than five, there's no point doing that. We just level the whole lot. And that's another high one. So we've got two high ones already. So once I get above five, I just do a lot. It's just quicker. And that way, we just get the same level along the whole length. It means I will have to remove a knot if I end up doing the lot. Already three. So I'm going to let me own a no. I'm, I really do think it's going to be a fret level. Again, 
down there. I will tap these frets down just to see if they're unseated. Now when I mark the frets I mark three areas. Area one, that side, area two in the middle, area three to me. But all three areas on that one, area one on that one, area two there, area three there. And that just helps me if I look at this one again, look, that's it. We've already got one, two, three, we've already got five high frets in the first seven. So we're going to go with fret level on this. Yeah, I give them numbers because if I'm writing writing them down on a piece of paper, I can mark the fret number and what areas one, two, and three underneath. But already six high frets there. <clears throat> So I need a fret level which does. Fret level and set up. All of your frets are out of whack with each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to level the whole lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So complete fret level on this. I'm going to charge it costs about, I think I charge 115, I should be charging 125 for an electric. Charge a little bit less on these, so I'm going to be charging 115 quid for a complete fret level with a setup. That's if he only wants to go for it. Oh, that's really high. Is that nine frets? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten high frets so far. It's never at a fret level with guitar. We might find there are no high ones at this end. They seem to sit a bit better where it sits over the body in some cases. That's a high one. I'll show you what I mean with the um, drawing a map uh, or a, a key. In a minute, so what I'll do is I'll mark all the frets the high spots and I'll write down where the high spots are. That way, if I ever if his ink rubs off, it shouldn't do because it's a permanent marker. I have in the past used removable marker. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve frets with high spots. So let's check again. That's one fret. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, remarkably high. Eleven. 12, 12 high frets, definite fret level, we're going to knock the nut off, we're going to level the whole lot in one fell swoop, I'm going to let the owner know, and um, once he's given me the okay, we will crack on with the job. Also what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing a lot of material from the bottom of this saddle, I may even have to remove material from the top of the bridge yet to get the action low enough, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So with the neck set dead straight, we are going to file the tops of the frets using a special leveling file, which I bought from Chris Allsop. Uh, great piece of kit, precision straight file, diamond uh, edge, and this is just great, just for getting the main material off. So what we're gonna do is, Check the frets we've worked, work, we've just worked on, and that already has reduced the height enough on that one. And that's pretty good. And we're just going to do the whole fingerboard. I have all the frets I need to work on marked. Very 
great thing about this is it removes a lot of material in a short space of time. Take us a long time to get the frets all level, and I can see where some frets are wider, some tops are wider. I remove more tail from some frets and others. Like this M1, for instance, was quite a bit higher than the rest. Now, when we're following a radius, when we start here, we need to follow the line from here, not follow inside the line. We need to keep this to maintain the radius along the length of the whole board. So as we get to this end, we're going to be overlapping, like so. And I think we're going to be pretty close to where we need to be. So what we're going to do is going to check the frets again. And any, any that are still high, we're going to concentrate just on those frets. But I'm thinking we're going to be pretty much level. And remember, the playing surface of a guitar is not the fingerboard, it is the tops of the frets. And once I know that we're level, we're going to go across with the um, leveling beam. two grits because the reason being the diamond file is a co much coarser grit than the um, leveling beams I've got. The leveling beam I've got 240 grit on one side, 400 grit on the other and what that's going to do is it's going to remove some of these deep scratches I've put in with the uh, file. Anyway, regarding level frets I think we're there. Quite a soft fret wire this, so it's not difficult to work. If it was Evo Gold or stainless, we'd be doing a lot more filing. But those frets are level, so we're going to get the leveling beams out in a moment. What we need to do first is we're going to mark these up again, all of the tops with marker pen. I wasn't going to be working on this right now, that's why I've not got my tools prepared. I've just come out from walking the dog. That's the tops of the frets all marked off. I'm going to go with the heavy duty juggling file. Okay, my Crimson Guitars radius beam or leveling file, a leveling file, sorry, leveling beam. 400 grit on the top, 240 on the bottom. It's been well used this stuff, so it's not super coarse anymore, but it does the trick. Doing a bit of work at this far end, so so because of that little kink in the neck, I've got a little bit more work to do up here. Yeah, making sure I've got 240 side down. A 
pan there, a little bit of pan there. So it means this last fret is still too hard. Right? Good. So I think we'll find now that all the frets are level. We'll remove quite a bit of material from this M1 because it's, I don't know why it's quite a bit higher than the rest. Yeah, that's all good there. So now we're going to go across with a 240 grit. This, I think level frets will make all the difference. Now I'm going to backtrack on my video in a minute, go and check the video I made and just see how high we are at this end or with the action because I think we're quite high. I might have to remove some material from the top of this bridge. But I mean, what constitutes a high action? I think anywhere around about under three millimetres is pretty good. Right, 240 grit. Now, going with the finer grit is going to reduce how bad or how deep these scratches are. So we're just going to... Plenty of height left there. Oh, it's my Allen key inside there. Fret rocker, where art thou? Removed quite a bit of material on this M1. I don't know why this M1 was higher. Good thing is we're just going to check for level now. Feels pretty good. And this will make all the difference. There's a lovely grain on this fingerboard I've just noticed. So that's going to really pop when we oil the neck or oil the fingerboard. So let's just give that a, I don't know why that's so high. Oh, 
Hmm. Seems to be a little bit unseated, but it's fine now. Oh, well, as long as it's level now, that's fine. So the frets are level. Let's go back again with 400 grit. Just to smooth everything off. That's it, the frets are now level. So still plenty of work to do. I'm going to get this fingerboard all taped up, ready for recrowning. You know how I recrown frets, so I'm not going to explain everything, but in short, the tops of the frets are now that way, they're now flat where they were. We had this beautiful crown going that way like a D on its side. Uh, we've flattened the top, so we're going to recrown them using various files. Um, I'm going to tape the fingerboard up so we just have the frets exposed so I don't mark the fingerboard because I'll be using files or rolling them over or what have you and I'll be rebuilding that crown. Uh, once that crown's rebuilt we'll polish the frets, we'll get all the scratches out and we'll bring them up to a nice shine. So pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not going to film everything because time is a little bit short um, but I will bring you back in periodically and show you little parts of what I am doing. So I've decided I'm going to show how to cram file, um, how to cram frets, and I'm going to be pretty quick. I'm going to be using two files. Um, in the olden days, we'd have used a three-corner file, uh, which you would have it'd have been a, exactly it's equilateral triangle cross section file where the uh, corners would have been ground smooth, and you just roll over and you roll them over, and you roll them over till you rebuild that crown. That's how you do it. But nowadays, we don't need to do that because we have files that do that for you. And I have two files I use in particular nowadays and it does all the work for you. But I'm going to explain what they are. So your first file is a Zyman file. It's a Stumac Z file and this is great because it has closest to you it has a long shallow cut and it has a short deep cut closest to me. Turn it 180 degrees, it has the opposite. Short deep cut next to you, long um, short tapered cut next to me. Great thing about this is it cuts different amounts from each side of the fret. You flip it over, it cuts the same the opposite side on the, uh, the opposite amount on the opposite side. But what it won't do is it will not touch the top of the fret. So what that does is that builds up that crown, but leaves the top. Meaning if you leave the top, don't remove any material from the top, you still maintain that level along the whole length of the neck. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Really easy, it's a diamond file. Great piece of kit. Saves you a lot of time, just a few strokes, and now you see why we tape up the fingerboard. Turned it 180 degrees over that side, and there you go, you have a thin black line down the centre. We've rebuilt that crown, now it may be a little bit uneven, it's why we'll move to a second file. And the second file, again, is a diamond file, but this already has that concave cut in there, or the other crown in there, and we're just Going to remove any unevenness. This does touch the top of the fret, so we're not going exactly across. We're just going to go across the edges and angle each side. So we've maintained the height by leaving that black line. We've now rebuilt that crown perfectly, and we're going to move on to the next one. Always wipe the file. See, so you always get material from the file, and you're going to do exactly the same again. I have many different files to do this job, like for instance when I work over the body later I'll use a different file again. I'm not going to explain all the ins and outs of that tonight, or on this video, but here you go. Lovely thin black line down the centre, we'll clean the file ready for the next fret. Back with this one, we'll rebuild that crown, remove any inconsistencies, angle again, and then over this edge over that edge and that is two frets recrowned perfectly recrowned got quite a few more to do probably 17 more i'm going to do all those off camera once that's done we can move on to the next stage which will be polishing the frets 
Hi, what a great morning guys. Um, it's my day off from Royal Mail, so I'm able to work on guitars all day. I'm listening to a, uh, off watching a YouTube video on uh, atheism and uh, how atheism proves that you believe in God. It is astonishing, so if that's anything that interests you, and it really, really ought to, you should go onto YouTube, type in Answers in Genesis and Atheism Proves God. It'd be absolutely fantastic, really, really enjoying it. But anyway, back to this guitar. And I've finished polishing my frets, seven grits of paper, finest grade steel wall, and these frets are immaculate. They look absolutely amazing. So, because I want to get a lot done today, I'm not going to uh, stand about just blabbing. I'm going to peel off this tape and expose the frets. So I've still got more work to do on this. We're gonna, once this is done, I'm gonna fit the nut. Once the nut's fitted, we're gonna remove some material from the bottom of the saddle. If you remember, the action on this is really high. So two ways to reduce the action height is cut the nut slots and remove material from the bottom of the saddle, which we're gonna do. Um, in extreme cases, you'd have to reset the neck. That is on a guitar uh, like this, it's probably too expensive, it's going to cost you hundreds of pounds. So we do what we can with the means necessary, uh, but obviously affordable. So like I said, I'm going to peel this off just to expose the fret. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to keep the camera running, so you get to see how fabulous these frets look. And trust me, they are fabulous. So remove the tape. You see now why I put strip down the length. It means I can just peel up and get a start. And we won't do it all in one go, but certainly. There you go. This gives me a good start. Makes it easier to remove paper. There's something else we're going to do. Is we're going to treat the fingerboard with mineral oil, you know it's lemon oil. Basically specially formulated mineral oil for the darker woods, i.e. palfero, ebony, rosewood. And it will penetrate into the wood, lift any grime and dirt, and it will slightly moisten the top of the wood, stop it cracking in time, and it'll make it look fantastic. Uh, once we let it soak in for a few minutes, we've got a good few minutes, 15, 20 minutes, any dirt and sweat on there, we'll be able to wipe off. In extreme cases, we'll scrape it off and we'll oil again. But this is not this is not that bad. I can see just one coating is going to be enough. You can see how much we've polished these frets because we've pressed this paper right in. So some of it can be a little, a little bit difficult to remove. It's why we put that tape on the edge. But there you go. Bear with me. That is removed and wow, fret friends, these frets are a sight to behold. And like I said, we are going to treat the fingerboard, but wow, look at these frets now. They are level and they are recrowned and they are polished. Let me turn the guitar around. Look at those. They are fabulous. So without further ado, I'm going to go with some lemon oil. The nozzle, the spray nozzle on this is not going to anymore, so I do have to kind of spray it on and uh, spread it with my hand. Doesn't matter if we get some on the headstock or the body because it all needs a clean and polish anyway. But there you go, not too much, I'm just going to let that do its job, soak in 5, 10, 15 minutes. Once it's all dry and wiped off, I may give another coat, I don't know yet, but I'm going to be gluing the nut in place. And I'm going to be looking at the saddle at the far end, seeing how much I can remove from the bottom of there. For instance, if I remove two millimetres from the bottom of the saddle, it will remove one millimetre action from the 12th fret. Because your full scale length is here, 12th fret is right in the middle. Remove two mil from that end, remove some mil there. Remove half a mil from that end, it removes a quarter of a mil there. So we can certainly change the action just by removing, uh, lowering the nut and lowering the saddle. So there you go, that is looking fabulous. Now let me give you another quick look of how it looks, or how the frets look now. And look at that, it's never gonna look like a new guitar because it's got dings and dongs, but look 
at the plane surface, the top of the frets and look at the fingerboard. That is fabulous. So I'm going to crack on, do some more work, I will come back. I'll probably not show you all the work because I want to crack on and get plenty of other jobs done today but I will certainly come back and show you the results. Moving on, I have glued in the nut. Um, with the frets all done, the fingerboard all treated. I've also slightly oiled the top of the guitar just to bring a little sheen back to there. And I'm looking at now working on the saddle. And uh, I do remember from the past that we need to remove some material from the bottom of the saddle to bring the action down. Now, I couldn't find the original saddle in the guitar's case and I was quite sure I'd put it there. Um, so I went and got an old saddle I've got knocking about, slightly less wider than it ought to be. This is 71mm, I need a 73 but I filed it down, got it to fit. I was going to use it and I thought, you know what, I bet I've got something better than that. And I realised I got a piece of um, Hosco, I got a Hosco saddle, a blank, to cut. It's a piece of bone from Japan. And I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll trace around the other one, extend it a little bit, make it right size, and I'll cut round it and I'll make a new one. And that is what I was going to do. I was all prepared to do it and I thought I'll just go and check the video see which side I need to put the compensated bit on and see where I need it to be and then I went back in the case I thought I'll have a feel around and I actually found the original and it's actually compensated in two areas on the A string and on the B string so I thought right okay I've got to use the original it'll just make it a lot, lot easier than carving the top of this which in itself would have been a great experience but I thought I'm going to use that one so what I've done is I've marked it on the bass side and treble side where I'm going to remove material I'm going to remove slightly more from the bass side which you looking at it that way is that side and the treble side a little bit less and if I need to remove any more I can do so that's exactly what I'm going to do I'm also going to slightly reshape the top because the strings have, have put grooves in there don't know if you can see where you are so I'm going to slightly carve and, and sand it and well, if I'm actually going to file the top just a little bit just to you know make it a little bit but then again those grooves should be okay you know, we're not going to do a lot by carbon into it, we're only going to form again anyway. So I'm just going to soften the top a little bit and I'm going to remove that material from the bottom. So looking at this side, base side, I remove about two mil on the treble side, probably one and a half millimetres. And that should give us enough uh, to reduce the action somewhat in the middle. We're also going to look at the nut slots, but they can certainly go a little bit lower, maybe even half a millimetre lower. So it's another quarter of a millimetre here. So I think we're going to get one and a quarter millimetre height removed from a 12 fret that is certainly going to be enough for what we want we can also slightly straighten the neck by tightening the truss rod and removing that relief bringing the action lower as well so there are a couple of things open to us i may need to remove more i don't think i can remove more material from the um, saddle but if i can remove any more i will do so i'm going to crack on with that and um, we're going to put some strings on i ordered these strings special is deodario nickel bronze it's the 1152 set I had to order these in, they're brand new seal, they're going to go on there. And um, I'm sure it's going to do the job well. Back soon. So I've had the Dremel out and I've took the saddle as low as I dare. And uh, it could possibly be a little bit too low because the brake angle now is going to change it on the top of this bridge. But I'm thinking we'll just about get away with it. So I'm about to stick some strings on it and uh, see what a difference it has made to the action. I still think it's going to be a tiny bit on the high side. The only thing I could really do to make that any better would be to remove the saddle completely and take some material from the top of here, which is what we'd normally do. But I don't want to do that. That's kind of extreme. And uh, we shouldn't really need to do that because I don't see there's any belly, belly bulge in the guitar. So I'm thinking we're going to, be able to get, the, get the action right uh, just by altering the truss rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera down there on the guitar and I'm going to start putting some strings on and we're going to see where we are. I think that's a nice angle. The bottom of the um, saddle, I removed the material I wanted to remove just by putting a Dremel in a bias with a cutter on it and just passing this along the cutter then running it across a nice flat file just to soften and smooth it, smooth it at the bottom. So we're going to crack on there with, stick some strings on. These Deodario, wherever they are, nickel bronze, it's a uh, it's an 1152 set. 
I've also off camera I've tightened up all the screws and tighteners and everything on the tuners just to make sure that they're stable which they are and all being well I do have a really good pair of scissors knocking about for whatever reason I can't find them right now so hopefully these will caught together Nickel bronze, look at these, they look silver. You'd have thought they'd be certainly R4 an acoustic guitar, but they are a silver looking string. Oh, they're very, very slightly got a yellow tint to them. That's interesting and nice. But anyway, we're gonna put these on. Make sure we insert the string the right way, and we're just gonna check. Have a decent action now. If it's if we've got the action too low, that's a good thing because it means I can slightly shim under the saddle. And I would shim with I've got some nice maple veneer knocking about. And we'll cut a strip of maple veneer and stick that underneath. It's not going to alter the sound. In fact, if anything, it's going to make it sound better. But anyway, let's just get a string on and see where we're going to be. The knot is just glued it just with a spot of glue in the middle just to hold it in place we don't want glue all over it in case we need to remove it again later we can just tap it out rather than have to commit major surgery to get it out well that action is as low as I'm going to get it and it's still a little bit high but from the nut slots, the nut slots are not deep enough yet so that's going to give us a little bit more. We can also straighten the neck again to bring the action down lower at the 12th fret. So off camera let me get the guitar struggle up and tune to pitch. That's going to be absolutely fine, we're going to be just in the uh, decent parameters there. I'm just going to measure the action, anything under 3mm will be good. We're looking to be about two and a half there, maybe. We are exactly two and a half millimetres at the 12th fret. That's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to stick the top heat on, just so we can measure that side as well. So I'm going to cut the excess from here. I'm going to get the top heat on there, all on camera. And measure the action that side. I think we'll be, if we're anywhere around about two millimetres, again, I'll be happy with that. Because the frets are level, with two millimetres, two and a half, nice level neck, we're going to get a nice action. With the frets level, we're not going to get any buzz. I always like to put a bit of relief in the neck. But sometimes, if you get too high action, especially on an acoustic with a straight neck, you're going to have to. That's going to be a little bit of a trade off. What we don't want, we don't want any fretboards anywhere. Strings feel really, really nice. A good three wraps around there. That's nice. I'd like four or five on a top E string. We're going to get at least four, which is great. But we're going to do all we can to get this guitar playing nice. I mean, it's quite an old guitar, looking at the condition of it. Wouldn't want to go any lower on that one either, but it's pretty good. Measure the action on this side. And exactly what I wanted, we are two millimetres on the treble side, two and a half millimetres on the bass side. That, to me, is within parameters. Anything round about three on the bass side, under three, 
and under 2.6, 2.5 on the on the treble side is fantastic for me. I'm well happy with that. You don't want two on one actually, not an electric guitar, it's an acoustic. So I'm gonna like I say, I'm gonna get the strings on. And once the strings are on, we're gonna bring it to pitch, we're gonna check everything and we're gonna come back to the nut. We are gonna be a little bit high here. I will set the neck dead straight. We're gonna measure again, then we're gonna cut the nut slots a little bit deeper bring it closer to the first fret it means we're going to stay in tune instead of when we bar a chord on the F or F sharp, G, whatever we're not going to be going sharp I would say with these being so high you're going to be going slightly sharp right now so like I said, I'm going to get strung up and we'll come back and we'll have a look at the action the truss rod and the nut okay, so I'm very happy where I have this guitar at the moment I have the strings on, I have it tuned to pitch I've set the neck dead straight and I have an action I really like. We are at the 12th fret on the bass side, we are 2.7 millimeters and on the treble side, we are 2.1 millimeters. Now that is well close to where I want it to be, two and a half on this side, two on that side, but we have not cut the nut depths, nut slot depths properly yet. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, it will be as low as we can go, even with the 2.7 and the 2.1 there, it's absolutely fine. <laughs> sounds nice, sounds nice and big, plays nice. And let's just have another quick look at where we are. We are right, just coming up to the line of 2.75 millimeters on that side, and we are just over two millimeters on the treble side. That is fantastic. Um, I wouldn't want to alter the truss rod anymore. We have the next set more or less dead straight. We have a tiniest bit of relief at the seventh fret, probably a tenth of a millimetre. Let's have another quick look. Might be a little bit less than, might be less than that. I don't know yet. There is nothing there to speak of. So we could, if we wanted to, straighten that up a little bit more if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that. I'm well happy with it where everything is. So let's move the camera again. Let's move on to the nut. And like, like I always do, I like to work live. So I'm just going to leave the camera running. And we're going to have a look at the nut slots. I'm going to measure them. I'll keep the tuner there and I'll keep it turned on. I'm going to grab myself a um, feeler gauge. Because I will be doing stuff with measurements. I've kept the packet there just to give me a reference on the uh, string gauges or which string is what. It doesn't actually, does it say on there? Uh, but, 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 but. Yes, it does, 1152. Right, that's good. I've got that in front of me so I know which string is what and I'll know which file to use to cut the slot. So let's have a look, see where we are. So I would like a measurement, just for argument's sake, and without explaining why, 0.3mm gap this side, 02 that side. That's a gap from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. So let's see where we are. And we are way high on that side. Let's have a look on the other side. We'll stick a 0.3 in there, just for argument's sake. And we're a tiny bit high on there. So that's good. So we are gonna go with, we're gonna grab some files. These are my Hosco nut slotting files. These are the expensive set. These are brilliant. Uh, these cost me about 125 quid for the set and we're gonna try and match each string. So we're gonna be looking for a 52. Do we have a 52? I don't think we do. I think the closest we have is a 50. Here's a 50, I'm gonna put a 50 in and wiggle it a little bit. So we've got a 50 for a 52. We've got a 42. I do believe we've got a 42 knocking about. There's a 42, then we're going to be looking for a 32, we do have a 32, which is fantastic, I'll show you all these in a minute. After the 32 we're going to look for a 22, the closest we have to a 22 is a 24, that's fine, a little bit over. Then we have a 15, I do believe we have a 16, and the next one is an 11, well the closest I've got to 11 I've either got a 10 or a 13, I'm going to go with the 13, I'm going to go slightly over. I'm trying to think what's the closest one to the 52. I've got 56, might be a little bit too much. We're gonna go with the 50. So, for an 11 we're gonna use a 13. I'll just show you these to the camera, 0 0.013. For the 15 we're gonna use a 16, 0 0.016. You see these are always all in their sleeves. 
For the 22, we're going to use the 0 0.024. For the 32, we're going to use a 32. For the 42, we're going to use a 42. And for the 52, we're going to use a 50, and we're going to slightly wiggle it. So, these files, brilliant piece of kit, made by Hosco. That's a 0 0.050. These cut a perfect U-shape. They cut the right shape for the string, for the slot. So that's exactly what I want. They're lovely and sharp. Uh, they were not cheap, which is really kind of reassuringly expensive. I don't think £125 for 11 set is that expensive. But from Japan, they're made in Japan, they work. They're certainly much better than those Uo Chikyu ones I used years ago. So, clean the file, and we are just going to cut the slot. What we're going to do is, we've got the tuner on. more or less in tune. We are going to measure again 0 0.3. I could go less than 0 0.3, but 0 0.3 is a good marker. And we're just going to pop the string off. We're going to take the file and we're just going to cut across the knot and we're going to go in a horizontal line, making sure we don't scratch into the frets. And we're just going to couple of strokes, then we're going to slightly angle back towards the machine head. And because this is a little bit narrower, we're going to just angle that way and angle that way just to widen that slot just a little bit. And that, my friends, is a new cut. We know we've already cut, we're now cutting to it because the note has gone quite a bit flatter. Take in the feeler gauge. little genital buzz we can go a tiny bit lower than that which I'm going to do again make small adjustments keep checking don't go gung-ho because if you knack that nut up you go too deep you're replacing it and that is time consuming and expensive so again just going horizontal one stroke and one stroke down towards the machine head angle angle and again back in That one is done and uh, just because we think we've got a trust rod set we're gonna, where we need it we're just going to check the action at the 12th fret and see where we are and my friends we are two point just under 2.5 millimeters absolutely perfect I was aiming for 2.5 I've got very very slightly under 2.5 that's that one done once we've done take the file give it a wipe I will go across these cuts in a minute with a steel brush uh, but for now I'm just going to put it back in its sleeve and move on to the next one so the next one at 042 we're going to go slightly down we're going to gradiate down a little bit so if we're 0.3 there we're going to be 0.2 there we're going to look about 0.27 on this one this is a 42 that is actually pretty close to where I want it to be so I'm just going to take the 42 and I'm going to hardly touch this. I'm just going to give it a cut horizontal, one down towards the tuner. And that should well be enough. So I finished cutting the nut off camera um, because I just wanted to get it done. We are all finished. Uh, the guitar came in needing, well, needed a lot of work, needed a fret level. The action was really high. I've got the action nice and low, or as low as I can get it. We recut the nut slots in the nut. We've removed some material from the bottom of the saddle, giving it a setup, tightened every nut and bolt on the tuners and everything. And here's the guitar all done. And um, action wise, I'll just tell you the action in a minute. Really nice playable action there. We have got it down to, on the bass side, we are down to 2.25 millimeters, and on the treble side, down to about 1.65. That is considerably better than when it came in. It was up to nearly four millimeters on this side. So really nice and playable now. Um, the neck is set more or less straight. 
no relief in there. There's nothing we can do about that. We're not to do that to get the action nice and low, but that is well, well playable. So that's as good as we could have done. It's a Simon and Patrick uh, guitar from Quebec, Canada. I've not checked the electrics, I'm going to check the electrics in a minute. The battery holder does not sit in proper, so that's going to need taping over, I think. Um, but that is it, this is all done. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to remind you of my website before I go. So my website, fretfriend.co.uk, even better, Facebook. Facebook.com forward slash NG17. That's Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. -E -E I am Victor, I am your fret friend. And until the next time, as always, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I will see you in the next one.